Emmanuel Quickly is quickly becoming one of my favorite players in the NBA. He was viewed as a soccer pick at 25th overall in 2020, but over his three NBA seasons, he's quickly proven the doubt is wrong. I'm sorry, I'll stop with the puns. But for as good as quickly as Ben, I think most NBA fans outside of New York don't realize how good he is. In fact, I would go as far to say most NBA fans don't have the correct idea of what he actually is as a player, which is what I want to talk about in this video. But quickly before we go any further, I'm sorry, I promise you that's the last one. If you're new and like basketball, I would really appreciate if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time and liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out in the YouTube algorithm and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the 2024 NBA season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Emmanuel quickly. Quickly is a smaller guard with a thin frame. What stands out most in highlights is his quick and twitchy movement skills, his sifty handle, electric scoring ability, the deep shooting range, off dribble stuff, floaters, and the high energy as a player. And when you see those smaller sifty guards with electric scoring highlights, your mind goes to a few players immediately like Jamal Crawford or most recently Bones Highland. And while offensively in highlights he is as electric as guys like that, he's not the same type of player as those guys because quickly is a more complete offensive player than those two in my opinion. And he's significantly better than those two defensively and that's not up for debate. Because unlike most small sifty electric guards, Quickly is one of the best two-way players for his position in the NBA. One of the most encouraging improvements on offense with Quickly has been his efficiency. In his first two NBA seasons, he averaged 11.4 points per game on 39.3, 36.5, 88.5 splits, and a 54.93 shooting percentage. This past season, he averaged 14.9 points per game on 44.8, 37, 81.9 splits, and a 57.8 true shooting percentage. His efficiency increases are even more encouraging when you factor in he saw increase in volume as he averaged career highs in field goal attempts, 3 point attempts, 2 point attempts, and free throw attempts. And on top of that, he did it on a playoff team that made it to the second round. And I see that as a lot of indicators that suggest he is a positive impact offensive player. Now, one thing you'll notice when watching quickly on tape is he takes a lot of three-pointers. In fact, 48.3% of his field goal attempts this past season were three-pointers. His 2.2 rim attempts per game in 2023 were in the 50th percentile this past season. However, he is solid at drawing fouls, as he was in the 80th percentile in free throw attempts. On the surface, 3.1 free throw attempts per game isn't great, but considering he played under 30 minutes per game and was 4th on a team in terms of usage rate among rotation players on the Knicks, I think that's good, and even though he's not attacking the basket a ton, he does have solid indicators, he has a great floater, incredible reins on it, it's really hard to block, and he has the suiting touch to consistently go to it as well. And I would also say he's a solid passer as well. He's not an elite one, it's not like he's this primary playmaker, and there are times where he does have a bit of tunnel vision, but that's common with young guards, and it's not a glaring weakness in my opinion. He has solid vision, he makes decent reads, and passes well within the flow of the offense. He doesn't have to be a big time playmaker in my opinion, considering what I think he brings value wise as a player, and I'm not saying he will be, but Honestly, I think his playmaking as a passer is at a level where I'm confident in saying that he's not a one-dimensional offensive player. Quickly may not be a guy that you look at and say he can be 
the entire engine of your offense, like we say with Trey Young, Trey Gilchrist Alexander, Anthony Edwards, Darius Garland, or Luka Doncic. He doesn't have the rim pressure ability that most of those guys have that allow them to be that offensive engine, but he doesn't have to be a main option. He's a good three-point shooter, can play off the ball, creates well on the ball, his skill set fits well with others, he can play with your stars, like in the case of the Knicks, Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, and he can also play a bigger role with second units in spurts. And guys like that are extremely valuable. But what really makes quickly valuable is his defense. He is an elite defensive player, which may be a surprise to some or even most of you that don't follow the Knicks. But despite his smaller frame, he's proven to be a monster on that end before. He should have made an all defense team last season, and I'll stand on that. The fact that not only did he not make an all-defense team, but he didn't get a single all-defense vote is absolutely ridiculous. He can handle on-ball reps due to speed, quickness, he moves well laterally, and has long arms. A 6'8 wingspan for somebody at 6'2 is really good. He's a bit stronger than you would think, especially with his frame, but he handles contact relatively well. But where his real value lies is off the ball on defense. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you guys always have heard me say things like off ball defense and your ability to be a great one is a bigger component to you being an elite defensive player than your on ball defense. Because we see guys all the time that can be great on the ball defensively like Jalen Brown, but because they struggle off the ball, it kind of negates their defensive impact to an extent. But on the flip side of it, you don't really see guys who were great off the ball defensively that are guys that you'll again say, okay, they may be a bit of a negative on defense because most of those guys can also play on the ball and for the most part, if you can play off the ball on defense, you can handle on ball defense as well. He has active hands in the passing lanes. He positions himself well. He covers ground well. He's good at contesting shots for someone that small. And I think his wingspan is a big factor in that. He plays tougher than his frame suggests. And the engine of his elite defense is his motor. And like you guys have also heard me say, the key to being an elite defensive player is your motor. You can have all the tools in the world you can have the long arms you can have the height you can have all the movement skills the athleticism but if you don't have the motor to be a great defensive player you aren't going to be a great defensive player and most times you're not even going to be a good defensive player motor is just that important and i think a great case that would be andrew wiggins where in minnesota he wasn't good on defense at all and a lot of that had to do with the motor, even though he had the defensive tools. But he gets to Golden State, he becomes more locked in, around veterans, the motor got better, and he turned himself into one of the best wing defensive players in basketball, and it's a key reason to why they won the title in 2022. Quickly has that motor, and he has the tools, and I think moving forward, he should be making at least a few all defense teams in his career. Quickly is the ideal guard for the modern NBA. He may not be a heliocentric playmaker. He may not be a big time offensive hub that you build your offense around, but he brings everything you want in a guard that isn't a main option on the team. He's a good scorer that can go off for big games at times when needed. He's a really good shooter. He's a solid passer that doesn't drag your offense down. He can play on the ball, he can play off the ball, which gives him lineup flexibility and role versatility. He can close games for you, and he's an elite defensive player that has a high motor. He's not perfect by any means, the finishing numbers aren't great, but no player is perfect. I'm not saying that quickly is Michael Jordan by any stretch of the imagination. But what quickly is as a player is also incredibly valuable. He brings that same electric scoring punch of a Jamal Crawford or Bones Highland, 
but he's more efficient than those guys. He's more well-rounded in terms of his overall offensive skill set than those guys, in my opinion. And also, what he brings defensively is more valuable than those guys ever have or will. He brings all the positive value that the stereotypical sixth man does on offense off your bench and then some. But he also brings a defense that usually holds most quote unquote sixth man microwave scorers that come off the bench back because it's a limitation in the game. That's not a limitation for quickly. Again, quickly will probably never be a main option on a contender. He probably will never be a 25 plus point per game scorer on a high level team. But that doesn't matter to me because that's not what he is as a player. His skill set is one that can be incredibly valuable on a contender. A guy that can be the glue between your starters and Ben's unit. And I can't wait to see how quickly does this season. I can't wait to see what the Knicks do this season. Because for the first time since I was in middle school, the Knicks look really promising. But that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already, like, subscribe, and the notification bell notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out in the YouTube algorithm. And help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the 2024 NBA season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video, so YouTube will recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about Emmanuel quickly. How good do you think he is? How good do you think he could be? How good do you think the Knicks are going to be? Look through all that in the comment section below. And I just want to thank you guys for another great month on YouTube. Every month, really since the end of the 2023 season, which is really funny, has been incredible. We've set new marks for monthly highs in terms of subs gained in terms of views and i really appreciate each and every one of you for showing the support you have whether you've been here since the beginning or you're new all of it is much appreciated but with that being said have a nice day and i'll see you guys in the next one